Hello, my dear students, and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part nine of a 95 part series of tutorials in object oriented programming in C. In this tutorial, I'm going to look at the object oriented programming concept that we call relationship. My name is Memeji M. So you can simply call me Emily Swap. So, what is a relationship? A program is a bunch of objects telling each other what to do by sending messages. To make a request of an object, you send a message to that object. More concretely, you can think of a message as a request to a call or a request to call a function that belongs to a particular object. Each object has its own memory that is made up of other objects. You create a new kind of object by making a package containing existing objects. Therefore, you can build complexity in a program while hiding it behind the simplicity of objects. All objects of a particular type can receive the same messages. In addition, objects of the same class have a common relationship in that they all make use of the same data members and the function members. I repeat, objects of the same class have a common relationship in that they all make use of the same data members and the function members. Thus, the attributes of objects that belong to the same class have common properties. This means, that these objects are identified except for their state during a program's execution. The members of each class share some commonality. In addition, each member has its own state and name. Therefore, a set of objects that belong to the same class have identical characteristics or data elements and behaviors, or what we call functionality. For example, in my previous tutorial in this series, that is tutorial number eight, I demonstrated a class that, or two objects that belong to the same class that I called student one and student two. Both of them belonged to the same class. They belong to the same class that I called student details. And therefore, because those two objects belong to the same class, we can say that they had identical characteristics. That is, they had identical, they were making use of identical data elements. For example, a first name and animation number. And the objects that belong to the same class can also have identical behaviors, identical functions, sharing a function. A message is simply the name of an object followed by the name of a method that the object knows how to execute. If a method requires any additional information in order to know precisely what to do, the message includes that information as a collection of data elements called parameters. The object that initiates a message is called the sender of that message, and the object that receives the message is called the receiver. A program can therefore consist of a number of objects that interact together by sending messages to one another. In order for a message to make sense, the sender and the receiver must agree on the format of the message. 
The format is stipulated in a message signature that specifies the name of the method to be executed and the parameters included. The set of messages an object commits to respond to is called its message interface. This interface is specified as a collection of message signatures, each of which defines the name and parameters for a particular message. Association is therefore a relationship between two classes. It allows one object instance to cause another to perform an action on itself or on its own behalf. Association is therefore the more general term that defines the relationship between two classes where the aggregation and the composition are relatively special. For example, public class student registrar. So we have a public class called student registrar. We have our opening brace there, and then we have a member, we have a member, a method called student registrar, which is public. And then we have the details about it. And one of the details is another member called record manager and initialize method. So we can be able to access, we can be able to access, we can be able to access new record manager function through initialize function. In other words, if we want it, let me put it in a clearer way. This statement here is new record manager, and that's a function dot initialize function, remember. And therefore, you can even assign, or you can carry out certain operations in the initialize function that is accessible, that is accessible through record manager function. So you go to record manager function, while inside there, you encounter the initialize function there. And then you carry out the operations you need in that function or using that function. And all this is being made possible through the public function that we are calling student registrar or the public method that we are calling student registrar. And therefore, the new or the record manager, the new function, the new function that is being called record manager is being used to execute activities outlined in initialize the function. And the record manager is part, we can say is a characteristic of the public function of public member called student registrar, who is still a member of, who is a member of the class called student registrar. Then you close our class there. In this case, we can say that there is an association between student registrar and record manager. 
there is an association between student registrar and record manager, or there is a directional association from student registrar, record manager, or student registrar, or use a record manager. I repeat, in this case here, as you can see, we can say that there is an association between student registrar, student registrar, and record manager. Or there is a directional association from student registrar, from student registrar, to student registrar, who is a public member, and new record manager or at the record manager. I repeat, in this case, we can say that there is an association between student registrar and record manager. It's an association. Of course, you cannot be able to access a record manager without passing through student registrar. And you cannot also access initialized member without passing through record manager. For that reason, there is an association between student registrar and record manager, or there is a directional association from student registrar to record manager or a student registrar, or use a record manager. Since a direction is explicitly specified, in this case, the controller class is the overall student registrar. Since a direction is explicitly, explicitly specified, in this case, the controller class is student registrar. So this one here is the controller. So that's why we are calling student registrar class as the controller class. This is an example. So we have student registrar and we have student registrar member with method. We have record manager and the initialize method. So association is a relationship between two classes where one class use another class. And with that, my dear students and the rest of the learners, we have come to the end of part nine where I have looked at relationship. You can now continue to the next tutorial, which is part 10 of an entire part series in which I am going to introduce the next concept in object-oriented programming that we call inheritance. Congratulations for learning part 9 of 95 on explanation of object-oriented programming concept that we call relationship. You can access videos for the other parts in object-oriented programming series, as well as other computer or ICP videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICP YouTube channel below this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel by tapping on subscribe button below this video in YouTube as a support to the outlet Remembering that subscription is free if it's not currently reading as subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me and God bless.